Home Improvement Show, built by Par Lumber. When it comes to big or small projects around the home, Tony and Corey have got the know-how and the answers to make your life just a bit easier. Here they are, your Weekend Warriors, Tony and Corey. Hey, welcome to the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show built by Par Lumber. I'm Corey Valdez. And I'm Tony Cookston. Whoa, yes you are. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. We've got another great show lined up for you. Today, you know, Tony, Valentine's Day is around the corner. Very, very short corner. Did, did you right know? around the are corner. Are you ready? I am ready. You're ready. I'm absolutely ready. I'll tell you what, I have to be ready. Unlike you... I do not have the luxury of forgetting Valentine's Day. Do you want to know why that is? Uh, because you were married on Valentine's That's Day. That's absolutely right. See, it is my anniversary. And so it is doubly important that I recognize this day as something important. And uh, here's the thing. Flowers and chocolate and that kind of stuff, you know, after uh, after somewhere around 30 years, you know, it, that starts to become less potent. <laughs> It's, Chocolate never becomes less potent. I'm especially when you're dieting. In my opinion. You know what oh, I'm saying? That's true. That's true. I mean, you have to be sensitive to these things. But I am in a unique position because there are things around the home that need to be done that really could be considered Valentine's gifts. I totally agree with you. So we compiled a list of projects around your home that will make your spouse very happy. That's right. Or, uh, you know, these some of these projects are even romantic. Yeah. Would you say? Uh, well, I mean, I yeah, absolutely. I Here's what I want to know. Did you get the buy-in? Did you get some buy-in from Laura on this deal? Have you talked? Have you covered this topic? I mean, no. uh, does she know I'm you're gonna, talking about this if stuff? If I tell her all the things on this list, I will be stuck doing all of them. So no. Which is worse because I'll be over here helping you. <laughs> That's right. So I'm not, I'm not going to do, I, you know, some of these I've already done and some of them I want to do, but yeah, I don't want to put all those ideas because then I'll be busy till I'm a hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah. No, I so. agree. But there are some really great things we're going to talk about today. Um, and they definitely are focused on, um, you know, this holiday. Like these are the types of things that you're thinking about around this time of year and uh so these will be some things that you can do to make the house maybe a little more cozy or maybe you know a little bit more um romantic yeah romantic right that word yeah we're gonna talk about this but it's, i'm pretty excited about this show actually Un unlike our recording studio that we're in right now that we've made bromantic yeah this is I feel. This is definitely not we've got some cool stuff yeah. in here it's, it's very <laughs> romantic <laughs> <laughs> it's not romantic. It is bromantic. Uh, yeah, this is a good time. This is uh, this is a super great topic. I, I'm very excited about this. Actually, I've you know as we've been talking about it and adding items to the list, uh, I think it's going to be a good one. And yep. it's not too late because maybe even if you can't get the project started and completed between now and Valentine's Day, maybe you make up a little card that says. This is a certificate good for <laughs> one free hug. No, no, no. Good for one back massage. <laughs> I, I gave those to my mom. No, 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 no. Good for the repair of one squeak. <laughs> <laughs> there's always, is there, tell me, tell me, there's always something in the house that squeaks. Yes. Right? Yeah. Am squeaks. I right? There's always something that squeaks. Squeaks are never good. And they need to be repaired, but they're also rarely a priority, right? Because it's just a squeak. A squeaky hinge on the bathroom door. Here's the deal, Corey. It does not impede the use of the door. It doesn't impede the quality of the door. It doesn't keep the door from closing and protecting someone using the bathroom from someone outside the bathroom. But every time you open it and close it and it squeaks, you just go, you, you die a little on the inside. Unless it's October. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the squeaky doors are cool and the creaky Oh, floors. right, right. Sure. There is an opportunity for so that. So what you got to do is put some sort of lubricant in there, like dry silicone or something like that. I don't like using WD-40 inside the house. I think it stinks. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't like that. You know, here's a tip. If you've got squeaky door hinges and you want something natural, 
you can use coconut oil. Take pull the pin on your uh, on your squeaky door and uh, put a little coconut oil. Put it back in there. Smells nice. Yeah, gets rid of the squeak. Yeah, the one thing about WD forty that I don't like is that it's it's an oily substance, yeah, it's right? Petroleum based. It, so yeah. it's it wet and it stays wet and then just kind of gathers stuff, yeah. lint or dust or whatever. And then you get those little black lines. You get globs. It's just a thing, you know. You run by it, your clothes get, you know, yeah, WD forty on them. Don't like it. <laughs> I don't either. But uh, dry silicone spray is a good idea. Um, coconut oil that seems very inexpensive. Everybody's got coconut oil in the cupboard, probably. Yeah, uh, but it that's a last good fix. Forever, but it works. That's a good fix. Uh, there's a lot of squeaky type things. Here's another one: squeaks in the floor. If there's a squeak in your floor, it does not take a carpenter. To fix that, there there is actually a little squeaky floor kit that you can buy at Par Lumber, for example, to uh, to replace uh um, to replace to repair a squeak in the floor. H- how does that work? Well, there's these long screws, uh, three or three and a half inch long screws, and they're very uh, thin diameter, but they're strong. So what they do is you find the squeak. They're mostly made for like carpet carpeted floors you wouldn't want to use it on hardwood right right as you're screwing through your hardwood but essentially you find the squeak in the floor in your carpet and you drive a screw right at that squeak and ideally you want to hit a joist of course you right want to screw through down through the subfloor and hit a floor joist and what that does is it draws that you know subfloor tight to the joist and then what happens is so you have this screw sticking out of the carpet well there's this other tool that goes onto that screw, and the screws are designed to snap off. Right, to break away. Yeah, but the best part is is they're designed to snap off below the surface of the plywood. If you if you drove it down far enough. Correct. <laughs> so you want to make sure it's driven far enough, and then when you put that tool on there and you wiggle it back and forth, the, snoo- the screw snaps off below the surface, so you'll never cut your foot on it or anything. So, right. And it, they work really, really well if you have squeaky carpeted floors. Yeah. It really is a super easy and simple fix. It just is a matter of finding the joist and screwing the screw down to the right depth. And and you get a bunch of them uh, with the tool. And so if you need to put in more than one, or if you have more than one squeak. But this is a thing. Squeaks are the opposite of romantic. So if you've got a squeak and you want to get that squeak out of the way... This is the time to do it. I mean, your spouse will appreciate it. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm if saying. If you're lining up the uh, the rose petals and the candles and you walk in and you... <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to sneak around and scare people when the, do- when the doors and floors are squeaky. Uh, the same goes for, you know, windows. Uh, if you got a squeaky window, you just have to address it and stop ignoring it. Right? Totally. And there are so many other things in the home that you'll be tempted to ignore, but we're here to tell you not to do it. We're going to give you some great tips on how to how to avoid doing that exact thing. Yeah, we've got a whole list of uh, very good projects that you can either start now or think about doing before Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Okay, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, more tips for Valentine's Day. You're listening to Tony and Corey, your weekend warriors. We'll be right back. Our Lumber is committed to providing the best customer service. We provide personal service. We're problem solvers. We're positive and courteous. We're competent and professional. We are committed to delivering exceptional service every time. We're appreciative and we care. We are Par Lumber. Hey, welcome back to the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show. Thanks for staying with us. Today in the show, we're talking about Valentine's Day (laughs) and projects you can do around your home that are going to be very appreciated by your spouse. So uh, let's get into it, Tony. But first, actually, I want to tell everybody, uh, we have a new website that's uh, online right now. Uh, We're uploading all of our video podcasts up there, our Instagram, our YouTube. Uh, Most of them are at WW Home Show. 
Uh, but if you go to par.com, that's P-A-R-R.com, click on the Weekend Warriors link. That'll take you to our site, and uh, all of our stuff will be on there. You can search and, and like and uh, subscribe and follow and do all that stuff. We'd appreciate it. And uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're new this year. We're doing all kinds of uh, home improvement videos, how-tos yeah. and tool reviews and all kinds of cool stuff lined yeah. up for this year. Great Super stuff. excited. Yeah, absolutely. Video podcast. Video podcast, people. We're doing that right now. Yeah, video it's podcast. So exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. Well, it's exciting for us. I'm quite certain it's not exciting for you. Yeah, but probably not. we were happy to bring it any way you look at it. Yeah, if you want to see what our studio actually looks like and how we built it, uh, we took this thing from a shed to a pretty nice studio. Yeah. In the course of a, a week, a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, we and, uh, we battled a little bit of reverb, some uh, some uh, echo, yes. but we did definitely tackle that, and we've got we got quite a great. I think we got a pretty good sound. I want to do a how to video on how we built these uh, panels, sound absorption panels, sound absorption panels. Yeah, acoustical. Yeah, they're panels. very very cool. They look like uh, they look kind of like canvases with logos on them, but uh, that was just to dress them up a little bit. They're um, they're actually functional acoustical panels, and then we didn't figure you wanted to look at insulation, so so we covered them up. But yeah, they look great and they work great. Yeah, they they work great. That Absolutely. might be a project on your how to uh, or or on your uh, Valentine's, Valentine's list. list you know? Yeah. If your I house mean, is too echoey. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned is. that you've got a little bit of reverb going I on. I do. In your I house. have a huge reverb problem in my family room. Yeah. So I'm going to build a couple of these panels and make them look cool. Yeah. I think you're going to put your favorite sports team on there, or no? Probably white. You can put some hearts, some sort of white or grayish. Some grayish. Yeah. yeah. Make them in look color. Like, make them look like shiplap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so here, let's get to Valentine's Day. What is something romantic that is a project in the home that you could do uh, for your spouse or significant other? Let's, what's at the well, top of your list? Well, so it sounds really weird, uh, but, you know, my wife loves her, you know, her showers and her, her bathroom time. She loves to have her, her stuff in there. So actually what on my list, I put heated bathroom floors. Oh, you know, man. When you're, when you're walking in there with no shoes on that tile, it's really cold. Yeah. So we're actually going to do a remodel in our bathroom, hopefully next summer, probably next summer, maybe this fall. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to do heated bathroom floors. That seems like a super expensive project that would take a lot of time and money. Have you done any research there? I've done quite a bit of research. It's uh, very inexpensive. Uh, you can run on a standard uh, outlet, not an outlet, but, you know, a standard breaker. You know, oh, there's sure, nothing sure. crazy there. Sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, everything I've read says you can get about 30 square feet and it'll take up as much power as a big screen TV. So in, in their electric, you can wire them right to a, a timer and... Uh, yeah. Heated floors. Interesting. Very inexpensively. Essentially what you do is you put, uh, there's a mat that goes down and then you put it right, the tile right over it. Interesting. So it radiates up through the floor. Yeah. That's about, a, I mean, 30 square feet, somewhere around seven by five maybe, or, or eight by four or something like that. I, you know. Yeah. Or 10 by three. Let's that keep going. Let's pro there's probably not a lot of bathrooms that are 30, 10 by 3. 30 divided by I'm 4. trying to think of a standard size bathroom. Of course, in that bathroom, you wouldn't be putting it under the tub. You wouldn't be putting it under the toilet, under the countertop, yeah, or the under cabinet, the yeah. cabinets. So even if you're thinking about the whole bathroom size, the amount of that that you would use just in the floor that's affecting your feet, right? That's uh, That seems very feasible. Oh, yeah. And also very affordable. That's a great idea. Here's another one for the bathroom. Okay. A heated towel rack. Interesting. Yes. All right. All right. When you get out of the shower in the morning. It is nice to have a cold. warm towel. That's that's true enough. Heated towel rack. That is a sweet little um, gesture that I feel like could be a, a project that you could do for Valentine's Day. Uh, do you have to buy the preheated rack and install it? Or do you, um, do you have to, is it just plug in, you think? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't own one. But I think uh, I think I will. You think you're going to do a good idea? I might incorporate <laughs> that into my 
Yeah. Or bath remodel. Well, that's a really good idea. I've heard you talk before in the past, as long as you're in the bathroom, I've heard you talk about heated toilet seats. <laughs> and so <laughs> yes. I did a little bit of research on a heated toilet seat because I thought to myself, well, you know, how, how expensive can it be, right? That seems like it'd be a pretty cool thing and, and not so much a novelty, but really functional. And uh, if it's, if it's feasible and it's not super expensive, well, so during my research to find out about this heated toilet seat, I found some stuff, Corey, that I did not expect to see. We're talking about a toilet seat. Well, it depends on how you Googled it. We're talking about a toilet seat that uh, is heated, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. That is, it sprays fragrance that plays music for you and is antimicrobial. I mean, is that on your Christmas list? Can you even imagine that? I want a bathroom seat that plays my favorite music and uh, is antimicrobial and then also sprays poopery when I'm done. You <laughs> that see, is not on my list. It's okay. It's I'm just saying it's out there. But a simpler version of that probably is a heated toilet seat. Have you done any research on this? I haven't. I have not. I wonder if they are expensive. I feel like a heated toilet seat. If would, not, I'm in. I feel like a heated toilet seat would go right down, uh, right down with what you've been talking about. Um, heated things are very popular uh, because you know it's cold in the Pacific Northwest in the morning, and if you've got a job and have to get up early and move around the house, you're walking across cold tile. You're sitting on a cold toilet seat. Uh, you've taken a shower and drying off with a cold towel. These are all very. Uh, it seems like feasible projects for Valentine's Day. Well, here's one I did for my wife that's, you know, kind of big. Uh, but I put in a door in our bedroom that leads out to our hot tub patio. And I put a hot tub on it. So the really nice thing is to be able to come in, nice warm floor, heated towel, nice toasty towel, jump right in the shower. Yeah. On a cold winter night, there's nothing better. From the hot tub. From Straight from the hot tub. I mean, that's like... Because uh, it's like a shock to the system when you get out and it's, you know, 30 degrees outside. You're getting out 100 degree wet, you know, water. <laughs> so I'm feels, all about the heated stuff. It feels like uh, an opportunity to catch pneumonia uh, to me. <laughs> Although a fun way to catch pneumonia, fun. but... But uh, pneumonia, nonetheless. Well, you run three feet to the door. Yeah, you know that's why I put the door in. What happens you when run you? To the other end of the what house. happens when you get out soaking wet? You run three feet to the door, and the door is locked. That would be impossible. Then you're catching pneumonia. That would be impossible. Well, how is that impossible? Well, because we came out the door. You've to get got in the hot tub. kids, man. Ah, oh. kids like to lock doors behind their parents. I've seen it happen. I'd be mad. I mean, it wasn't me, but I've seen it happen. I'd be mad. Uh, what about what. what about some added storage in that bathroom? You gonna put an extra cabinet up on the wall, or maybe um, is there an opportunity to add some storage in a bathroom that doesn't already have a lot? That actually is on my list. Believe it or not, is bathroom storage. Uh, you know that I, my wife would just love to have more storage in the bathroom, more countertop space. Uh, in our last home, uh, I actually installed uh, her own uh, cabinet on the wall that had a mirror. And she stored all of her jewelry in it. Oh, yeah. Just for her jewelry. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a cabinet. It could just be a set of shelves that stands up behind the toilet, for example. Yeah. There are easy ways to storage. add storage in a small bathroom. That is a great tip. All right. We got to take another quick break. When we come back, more weekend worries. You won't want to miss this. You listen to Tony and Corey. Don't go away. Here's another tip with your caulking. You've got a brand new tube, you've just cut the tip off, and you need to puncture that little piece of foil. You take this piece here, so you can take a nail, anything, old screw. What you want to do is when you put it in the tip like that, you want to run it around in a circular motion and really widen that up. Because if you just puncture it with one little hole, that foil inside there is really tough. And a lot of times uh, when you put pressure on the end of the caulk, uh, caulking gun with the gun, uh, the caulking will want to worm out and fill that void, and it's going to be really difficult to gun. So if you've ever had a new tube of caulk that you've put in your caulking gun and it's really hard to come out, check that you've really opened that foil up.
We're good to go. Hey, welcome back to the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show. Thanks for staying with us. Today in the show, we're talking about uh, Valentine's Day. It's right around the corner. It's next week. Absolutely. And uh, you need to be thinking about projects, in my opinion. Yeah. uh, To go along with the chocolate, or maybe you omit the chocolate this year, and just do one of these. Yeah. Do one of these projects that we're talking about today. Yeah, well, I'm thinking this. You could buy flowers, right? But flowers will eventually die, and you can actually give the gift of time right of a of, warm toilet seat of a what which will be heated for so long i mean years and years of enjoyment that comes from a heartfelt home maintenance project or diy project I or agree. weekend warrior project so so we're giving you a list of things that are romantic upgrades for your home well not necessarily around romantic but they can them. be Some romantic around Some valentine's day here's a romantic one Double shower head. Yeah. I'm throwing that in there. Yeah. Nice. I want one. Well, I mean, I want one because I want water to hit me from both sides <laughs> when I'm in the shower. Here's the thing. Have you ever been in the shower with those huge rain heads? Yes. You know, the, the rain shower heads? Yes. I'm not a fan. What? I'm not a fan. Why? They don't have a lot of pressure. Well, they no. just kind of drip on you. It's like you're in the rain. But it's not just that. Well, that's the thing is I need that. If that it came with that and then another shower head that, you know, blasted the dirt off my face, <laughs> I'd be happy. <laughs> yeah. So you got to have the pressure washer shower head. Yeah. The giant, you know, ginormous rain head shower head. Yes. And, you got uh, it. And then what about the, you need a third one, massage or... Yeah, Some, I always that, like to have a handheld. Something that sort of always. massages your back while you're... It's yeah. not a bad upgrade either. No. A little massaging shower I'll tell head. you what, three shower heads is definitely the way to go. I don't have that, but I certainly feel like I would love it. Well, in my bathroom remodel that's coming is going to have two, maybe three shower heads. Wow. It will. Yeah. It's going to be a walk-in shower. So you come in. I'll be able to walk in it, yeah. It. You walk in through an opening that does not even have a door because it's so far away from the water source. And then you just sort of take a journey. You pack a lunch, take a journey to the other end of the shower where all of the water Well, is. seeing that my whole bathroom area is like six feet by six feet, oh, no. Probably not, huh? It's going to be, uh, yeah, a lot smaller than that. Yeah, well... I have grandiose visions of an amazing giant bathroom too, but... Well, uh, I do too, someday. Yeah. Build one big enough. So uh, here's something else in the bathroom, Corey, that I know is a big hit because I've actually been asked for it. Replace the mirror that you've got on the wall in the master or guest bathroom or both, right? With something that's a little bit more elegant. Just take that mirror and add a frame to it or go buy a framed mirror to replace that. The mirror is very functional and almost a requirement for every bathroom. But it doesn't have to just be functional. It can also be um, designer. Uh, it can be. It can add to the overall r- romantic nature of <laughs> your design in your bathroom. Well, it makes everybody look better when it's framed. Yeah, right? I just a- did that in my bathroom in our hall bathroom. You we did. Put a, we put a framed mirror in there, and I it, just it looks a lot better because what was there was this gigantic, you know, glued to the wall. 1960s 25 square foot mirror that was just weird it was big it was huge yeah it was big so we put we painted everything we changed that mirror out to a you know a framed mirror. it just looks a heck of a lot better yeah it does there's literally more frame than there is mirror and on yeah, that one yeah, that, that one particular is, one but it looks good i mean there's no doubt i can't see myself in it because the frame like crosses my chin well you know uh, you're tall but uh, <laughs> but it does look really good in there. I, I'm going to do, be doing something like that as well. So sticking with mirrors, there's uh, there's something that my wife asked for last year. And uh, I got her one and I installed it and she loved it. Yeah. It's one of those um, retractable makeup mirrors with the, you know, the magnifying oh, yeah. you know, glass on it. Yeah. And it has a ring around the perimeter of it that lights up. So she, it swings out away from the wall and it, so it char, it self charges or you plug it in and it charges. Interesting. And once it's full that, you know, and it's automatic. 
So when you pull it up to your face, it turns on. Oh. It's like motion activated. All right. And uh, yeah, she puts her makeup on that. It's fantastic. She loves it. Yeah, she doesn't have to lean over the counter anymore. Right. She just brings the light and the mirror to her face. Right to her. To her beautiful face. And and she can have that, you know, real magnified. Uh, that's, a, that's a great idea. I do know that um, I was going to mention that it would be really cool to add lights around a mirror, whether it's the mirror in the bathroom or the mirror at an armoire or a mirror somewhere in the, you know, in the bedroom that is easily accessible for putting on makeup. That's a good idea. Lots of lights, you know, like Hollywood lights around the mirror that yeah. adds uh, like a, like a dressing room with a sit down little counter. Yeah. Where they can make That's something that wouldn't be difficult counter. to add, but uh, I like your idea. I That's your a good wife, one. I think your wife would enjoy that. I, I think she I, would I, like that. I agree. You know, it's now we're talking about light. We were talking about mirrors. Now we're talking about light. If you're going to be adding light like to a mirror, for example, adding light in the closet always seems like the darkest place in the house. Oh, man. When you're picking out colors and styles, I mean, that's the place that you need to have a lot of light, especially at six o'clock in the morning when you're, you're really not seeing clear anyway. Adding light in the closet is a good way to make a spouse very happy. So here's one project that I did for my wife a few years ago. Uh, you know, our bedroom was bigger than we needed it to be, and it was short on closet space. So I opted to take three feet of the cl- of our bedroom. So it was like, I don't know, what is it, 10 feet, three feet by 10 feet. Uh, and I converted that, I framed it out, and I turned that into a closet. And also what I did was I added a big, long light on the inside of the closet. I did all custom shelving in there. So there's storage for her shoes, storage for all of her clothes, you know, her purses and all of that stuff. Custom, you know, from the whatever the closet places are. Yeah, yeah. I bought all those things that, you know, the components that are modular. And then that light, you turn the light on, boom, everything lights up. Yeah. It's fantastic. That closet is amazing. I distinctly remember when you decided that that was something you were going to do. I helped you frame the closet. You did. That you put all that stuff in. And when it was done, it was amazing. That is a very, very good list item because uh, I know that I am in desperate need of some organization also in my closet. I I built some shelves in there and uh, some organization. I added to the single shelf and closet rod that was in my closet. And I added some stuff, but it's sparse in nature. It's not really tight. And honestly, there's so much unused space in my closet that that is a great idea. Adding organization to the master closet and light. It's one of those little things that seemed, you know, no big deal. Mm -hmm. But when you put it in, you put it all together and you click that thing on, nothing hides in there. Right. Nothing. Yeah, that is uh that is very that's a very great idea. That's a super great idea. I like that one. That, that may be my favorite so far. Um you know, we're back in the bathroom again. How did you get us back in the bathroom? I don't know. There's I feel like there's so things. many things to do in the bathroom. Uh you uh, next on the list, you have a a bathtub caddy. But I think this may be more for the kids, no? No. You know what a bathroom caddy is or I mean, a bathtub I, caddy? I'm imagining what's so, in there. So a bathtub caddy, rubber is ducky. Essentially, you well, you need a soaking tub first. Yeah. If you have a soaking tub. Okay. What it is is it's like a a, a tray that goes from edge to edge, and then kind of fits nicely over that. So whoever's sitting in there can put that in front of them with their glass of wine oh. or champagne, or champagne, candles, interesting, and a book. I mean, all of those things, and they can stay dry above the water. That's what a bathroom. Or a bathtub caddy is. Interesting. That's a great Not idea. Not for your rubber duckies. Not for the rubber ducky and the G.I. Joes and the Transformers and, and I the, think, and I the think Barbies. I think you could make one pretty quickly. I agree with that. That's a really good idea. Uh, certainly want it to be waterproof. we got to take another quick break, folks. When we come back, more Valens, Valentine's Day items. You listen to Tony Corey. Don't go away. Thank you so much for checking us out. I'm super excited about this. In 2019, we are doing so much amazing stuff. 
video podcast. I don't know who would sit and want to watch Corey and I talk on the radio, but apparently there are some people out there. So that's something we're going to be doing. It's new in 2019. We're going to be filming a bunch of how-to videos. We're going to do, there's going to be quick tips in there, some product reviews, super exciting stuff. Go check out our new website, www.homeshow.com or weekendwarriorshomeimprovementshow.com. You'll see a bunch of stuff on there. All of our links are on there to social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Man, there's a ton of stuff. We're super excited to be able to bring you everything that we've got. So check it out. Thank you so much for watching and listening to us. We'll see you out there. Hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. Today in the show, we're talking about Valentine's Day projects that you can start now. You've got time. And uh, these, I think that you're your wife or your spouse will really, really love these. If you can accomplish one of these tasks between now and Valentine's Day, Cupid will be on your side. <laughs> and you are a true weekend warrior. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Uh, before we went to the break, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about the closet. We talked about uh, some lights. We talked about additional lights around a mirror. We talked about lights in the bathroom. We talked about lights in the closet. Very can't important. have enough lights. No, very important stuff. But I'll tell you what. You just said... You can't have enough light. But the fact is, in some cases, there's too much light. Mm, tell, me, tell me I'm right. In some cases, there's too much light. So this is what you want to do. You don't want to have to get up on the ladder or a stool or something and change <laughs> the light bulbs every time you wish there was a little different light in the room. So this is what you do, Corey. You, and, and I already know you know because you do this all the time. Every room in my house. Add a dimmer switch. What a great idea. We have a dimmer switch in the studio. Corey loves dimmer switches. It's a thing, right? I do. I do. So since you've done it so much, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the limitations maybe. If the light fixture or the light bulbs that you have don't... Um, don't work with a dimmer and, and how something like that is installed. Where do you get it? How do you install it? How does it work? You can get it from anywhere. Any, any, you know, home improvement store is going to have dimmer switches, but you do have to be careful about the bulbs that you use, uh, the fixtures that you use. Uh, they have to be dimmable. And if you're, depending on what you're using, if you're using incandescent or LED, they make specific dimmer switches for each. So, I mean, it, if you gonna switch to led now's probably a good time yeah you know and, and put by the led dimmer yeah uh because what will happen is you can put the dimmer on there and it won't work properly you'll get to a point that'll they'll make weird noises so they're they're designed differently and i'm not an electrician and i don't know everything there is to know about it but i know that there are specific switches for specific scenarios and there's also a limit on how many uh, watts you put through it so if, if it says you can have X amount of fixtures or X amount of uh, wattage in lights or, you know, volts or whatever, you just got to be careful that you're not putting 30 can lights on one dimmer switch. Right. But you can put multiple, you can put multiple can lights on one dimmer switch. Oh, sure. But there's an amount where yeah. it too, becomes too much. Right. You've probably got a dozen or so in your kitchen that's yep. on a dimmer. It mm -hmm. works just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, dimmers are... Definitely the epitome of romantic. Yeah, they set the mood. They set the mood. And if you don't have that, then uh, it, you might find that it's something your spouse would enjoy. And so this what's what makes it a perfect project for, for Valentine's Day. You know, what goes along with really nice dim music or, or uh, dim <laughs> lights... I do is, now. Is music. Yes. Whole house sound. Wait, dim music or just music? <laughs> Uh, yeah, dim hosts, maybe? dim some, dim some music. Yeah, dim. Anyway, so music. <laughs> One of the things that I did in my house that uh, you helped me with. Yeah. Uh, when I remodeled our kitchen, I went ahead and ran wire from my home stereo unit that I have connected to its Bluetooth, and I have it connected to just an old iPhone. Yeah. That sits in my kitchen that I can play any sort of music I want, and I have all of those wires that run to a switch on the wall that is a volume knob. It's an adjusting volume knob. So I can turn the music on and I can be in my kitchen and I can walk over, turn the volume down. I can turn it off. I can turn it loud. I love it. Yeah. And I have speakers in my kitchen. 
The other thing that I did was I added speakers on the exterior of my house that uh, kind of play over my patio where I've got, you know, my fire pit and all those things. So I, and I have a switch there, uh, a volume switch knob that I can adjust the volume there as well. So they're independent of each other. And I love it. Yeah. That is one of the most fantastic things. And I, I chose to go that route versus some of the uh, the wireless systems you can buy. Like uh, Sonos is a really popular one right now. It's really expensive, you know, and I didn't want to buy a Sonos unit for my patio, you know, or, you know, a Sonos unit for every room. I like being able to just have it hardwired. It was inexpensive. I bought all the stuff on Amazon. It was like 200 bucks. Well, your situation was unique because you had the walls open. You had the ceilings open. You had the opportunity to put wires in the walls, run it to where you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You did it yourself. You used simplistic materials. You didn't necessarily chintz on the speakers. They're nice. Yeah. Um, But you just ran wire from the source to the speakers to the... Well, it goes from the source... To the the volume switch. It goes from the source to the volume switch, and then from the volume switch to the speakers. Right, right. Independently from in each room. So I only wired the kitchen, which we spent most of our time in anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I wired uh, the exterior, and then I also have it in my living room. I didn't have the bedrooms or anything like that because if we want music in the bedrooms, that could be right. totally separate on a. But on you a again, you were in a situation where you had the walls open. You were able to put that in there, and that made it easy. Absolutely, I feel like a wireless system is a nice option. It is. It can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, if depending on how many speakers you buy, and you know, and obviously if you go with Bose or like you said. Sonos, there's some expensive stuff out there, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Yeah. There are less expensive ways to get music wirelessly throughout the house. And uh, it definitely would be something that could help to set the mood in an in a home with some very dim lighting. <laughs> uh, you know what else goes right along with those things? Again, we talked about this earlier. Um, warmth is something that is comforting, right? And goes with that the dim lighting and the soft music. So what about you've got a house, Corey, that doesn't have a fireplace. And a lot of people think about how romantic it is to sit in the living room in front of a fireplace. So what do you do if you don't have a fireplace or maybe even have a good spot to put a gas or, or a wood stove? Well, you know, they make electric fireplaces that you can put just about anywhere. You know, they even make them now that fit into uh, in a, in a wall that don't require any venting or anything. And they actually put off a decent amount of uh, heat. They're just electric, but, you know, would require an electrician to come out. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, they draw, but I'd imagine it's a fair amount if it's a in-wall heater, heating unit, essentially what it is. Well, I've even got to take that one step further. I bought, it's been a few years ago, five or six years ago, but... I bought, Corey, an electric fireplace that came in at what looked like an entertainment center, sort of. It's got shelves on either side of it and, uh, and, a, and a door that closes uh, and then a, a nice finished tabletop up on top. And this thing, Corey, is wired with a pigtail plugs right into the outlet in the wall. Oh, really? Absolutely. And it fits. It's a corner unit. Is that one of those ones made by the Amish? I I don't know. It fits right into the corner. It's a corner unit, right? And it's a fireplace. It lets off quite a bit of heat, actually. Uh, And uh, and it only costs about 250 bucks. A very inexpensive way to get the ambiance of having a fire and the heat that comes from a fire. In one of the, you know, relaxing rooms in the house. Does like it have one of those, living. like, uh, paper things that with the air behind it that flap? No, it it's, looks you like know, flame? in this particular case, the, the little logs in there that look like they're on fire, and it's lights. It's lights. It not No no paper fl- <laughs> fluttering around in there. You ever seen those with the uh, little paper? I have, yeah. The fans behind them? Yeah, this was, this is, this is very, uh, it's very well made. It looks good. And uh, whether you whether you know that it's a flame or not a flame, it, it, it gets the job done when you just need to have a little bit more romance in the room. Oh, very cool. And inexpensive. 
and easy to install. So that's a good one. Um, Here, moving on. Here's here's a good one. I did just a quick project. Yeah. If you've got a situation where you have an empty cabinet, what about putting in a wine rack? Don't you have in your kitchen an area set aside for wine? There is an open cabinet with, uh, with no door that it would be kind of like a place where you would put a microwave, really. You or, know, you, or a wine fridge. Or a wine fridge. Or there's a lot of things you could put in. It's an appliance space, right, for an appliance, whether it's a microwave or a wine fridge or a wine rack or whatever. You can actually order cabinets that have that opening. It's trimmed around and it's finished, but it gives you the opportunity to put something in there. That's... What if you don't even have a bottle of wine, let alone enough wine for a wine rack? Hey, a wine rack holds whatever you put in it. we got to take a quick break. When we come back, more Valentine's Projects. You're listening to Tony Core, your weekend warriors. Don't go away. to the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show, built by Par Lumber. When it comes to big or small projects around the home, Tony and Corey have got the know-how and the answers to make your life just a bit easier. Now, here's Tony and Corey. Hey, welcome back to the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show. Thanks for staying with us. If you haven't already, go check us out on our social media uh, pages, we're on a, we have our own website now. If you go to par.com, click on the Weekend Warriors link. Uh, that'll take you to our new site. It's got our Instagram, our Facebook, our Pinterest, our YouTube channel. Uh, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We're doing video podcasts on there. We're also uh, doing how-to videos this year. It's really exciting. Go check it out. Uh, we'd love it if you subscribed or liked or followed. There are lots of things going up on Instagram. Our uh, videographer, uh, unbelievably talented. This guy takes the most amazing pictures yeah, he does. of our stuff, yep. and he posts them up on Instagram. So you got to follow that. Yeah. It's fantastic. Check that out and uh, comment and uh, all that stuff. We, we absolutely love that. And uh, he deserves the accolades, really. He does a really super-duper great yes, job. Yes, sir, buddy Terry. So uh, anyway, so today we're talking about Valentine's Day. It's yeah. next week. Yeah. And uh, if you're not ready... Uh, take one of these ideas we're talking about today yeah, and uh, do it. Get we, it done. We've had some really good ones. Um, we might uh, take a minute uh, later in the show and recap all of the things that we did or at least paraphrase a little bit. But we're right now, we've got some things we haven't talked about. We did talk a little bit about a mirror, Corey. We talked about a mirror, uh, repurposing the mirror that's in the bathroom, maybe taking it down and putting up a framed mirror, which is a great idea. Absolutely great idea. But here's the thing. The bathroom mirror does not take place of a full length mirror at some place in the master bedroom or in the master closet. There should be a full length mirror. I don't really know that it needs to be in the bathroom. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't want a full length mirror in the no. bathroom, <laughs> but it is nice to have a full length mirror in the bedroom or in the closet. Uh, so if that's not something that's in your arsenal, that's a great thing to add. I feel like your spouse would appreciate that. Yeah, they even make those ones that are stand up, you know, if you don't have oh, the yeah. wall space. Absolutely, like an A-frame sort of uh, yeah. thing or just leans up against the wall even maybe. Yeah, that's a very cool idea. But get one that's intended to be standing up that way because if you get one of those super cheap ones from Walmart or Bimart, <laughs> it'll flex in the middle. And if you're looking at yourself in a mirror that's flexing in the middle. It's like a little fun house. Yeah, yeah, like you've gained 620 pounds, like overnight you don't want if it flexes the other way you looked really tall and yeah, skinny yeah super skinny guy <laughs> yeah you don't it's weird uh i've always thought to myself Corey, that there's a lot of money to be made uh in the mirror business if you were to manufacture and frame and sell mirrors that were just just skewed ever so slightly that it gave you the sort of thinner look just a little i have heard not so much that you look like you know the you know house yeah i have actually heard that department stores were doing this really very thing it and? came out a long time ago that there were some department stores that were putting in their dressing rooms these mirrors that were slightly just curved slightly to make you look a little thinner yeah no well, joke 
I'll tell you what. If then you get home and go, single, what in the world? If every single mirror in the world was just slightly, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the end. You know, it wouldn't be terrible. I feel like I would put my stamp of approval on that. Ba-bom. No, man. <laughs> We're in a new world now. <laughs> Where and, it doesn't matter. And you have to be comfortable with who you are. Yeah, comfortable in your own skin. Doesn't matter how much of it you got. That's right. Diets uh, are for chumps. Anyways, a full-length mirror that allows you to see what you look like before you walk out of the room can be appreciated. Yeah. And uh, I feel like there's an opportunity there. Here's something in the bedroom that uh, I recently did mm-hmm. that my wife loved. She wanted a headboard and a very specific kind of headboard. She wanted it puffy uh-huh. and she wanted it to just hang on the wall. Sure. So I did a little bit of research. I did a little design work and I came up with a puffy headboard that hangs on the wall that's super sturdy and it doesn't move. And the way I did that was I took a, um, a piece of plywood, heavy duty, thick three quarter inch plywood, and I cut it to the size that I wanted it to be. So we have a king size bed. So whatever that width is. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's probably about three foot tall foam on the front and a little, uh, cotton batting on in front of that. And, uh, then I, you know, we picked out this fabric I, or let her pick out the fabric that she liked. We wrapped it around all the edges. Was it something very pleathery? No. Oh, okay. It's very was, fabric-y. Was, vel- was it a velvety? It's not velvety. It's oh. fabric Okay. It's very, I don't know how to describe That's it. That's fine. It's Whatever. fine if I just wanted to it's know. fabric. Okay. So we wrapped it around these. One of the things that I did want to point out that I had to do is I actually took my router and I routed the edges of the plywood on the backside uh, with like a quarter inch roundover bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way, when I wrapped the fabric around... It wasn't on a sharp plywood edge. Right. That's smart. I feel like over time it could, you know, cut loose sure. and fray and sure. whatever. So I routed that around. And then what I did was I installed a French cleat on the top and the bottom of the headboard. So that way when it hangs up on the wall, it goes in very snug. And it, it's, you know, it's not fastened just at the top. So it doesn't move at all. Oh, sure. It's super tight. You should describe a French cleat. Sure. Uh, because I feel like uh, it's it's a term that that uh, we've heard before, but maybe we're not exactly sure how something like that is accomplished. Yeah. I mean, it's French cleats different than a Spanish cleat. You know, Spanish cleat, really good at soccer. Oh, right. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> a French cleat. Gotcha. French cleat. Uh, essentially what it is, <laughs> is a piece of, uh, say you take a piece of wood. Yeah. And what I used was a two by four, you know, and uh, what I, I thinned it out a little bit. I put it through my planer and thinned it down to about uh, an inch and a quarter. And then I took a two by four and said, I set it sideways, set my table saw at 45 degrees, actually probably not even 45, probably like 30 degrees. And I ripped that piece of two by four right down the middle. So essentially what you have is two pieces with a scarf cut. Two halves, really. Two halves. So what you do is you take one of the halves and you screw it to your wall. And I used ledger locks. They're super duper strong uh, screws that are, you know, three and a quarter inches. They went into the studs. Super, super strong. And what you do is you take that piece that's that angles down and towards the wall. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And then what you do is you take the other piece and mount it to the headboard. The opposite, upside down this time. Yeah, the opposite. So when you set it on there, you're actually putting that board back together the yep, way it was it, before you cut it. Yep, and it slides down and tight against the wall. Very tight. So it, it takes a little bit of measuring to get both of the cleats to be perfect on the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I tell you what, when you're done and it's on there, it doesn't move oh, yeah. at all. However, if you need to take it off, you just lift straight up and it comes right off. Interesting. Yeah, very fantastic. interesting. That is, uh, that sounds like a very solid way to get something done. And maybe it can even be more solid if you turned the bottom pair upside down and then the way to get it on would be to slide it from one side oh. to the other. I feel like the first French cleat was used building the Eiffel Tower. I doubt it. <laughs> Get us into Tony Core, your weekend warriors. Don't go away.
You know, Tony, the next thing we need to do is put up what's called nail stops. When the sheet rocker comes in here, he's going to want to put a sheet rock up with screws or nails. And if he drives it through where there's an electrical wire, that could cause a disaster, a fire, uh, all kinds of situations. Are we going to run into a problem if we're using nail stops and he's using screws? Not at all. Do we need screw stops? <laughs> I think they'll stop both. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So let's put these up here. We're gonna, everywhere where there's a piece of wire that comes through a stud or the, through the top plate, we need to install one of these to protect that wire. Absolutely. We don't want any electrified screws. We're gonna put this over here where the wires come down through the top plate and nail them up. And that's it. Hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. Today in the show, we're talking about Valentine's Day. It's next week. You've got to have something for your spouse, your wife, your husband, your weekend warrior, whoever it is. You've got to be ready. Yeah. And uh, Tony and I have compiled a list of uh, very uh, Valentine's Day-centric you know, projects that you can do. I think you've got time to do them. Uh, if not, maybe you get them done before next Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this list is things that you have done, Tony, things that I have done, and then things that I want to do. Right. So, uh, and I know for a fact they will make my wife happy. And uh, some of these she doesn't even know she wants until, <laughs> like, for instance, you know, the hot tub. I put my foot down. I... You know, I have back issues, right? I have these surgeries and things, you know. So I wanted a hot tub. And I, 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 the summer or two summers ago, I put in a hot tub patio and I explained this whole thing to my wife. I'm like, I'm going to put a door here and I'm going to, you know, we're going to have this hot tub patio and we're going to be able to walk out of our bedroom and get in the hot tub. And she was like, yeah, whatever. Sure. Get your hot tub. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. She loves it. So, I'm telling, her, I'm telling her about all these things I want to do in our bathroom, our master bathroom, with the heated floors, in the heated towel rack, you know, in the large uh, countertop space, and all of these things that she doesn't even know yet. She but doesn't even know done, she wants, but you gonna, know she wants it. She's going to flip. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Well, those are the best kind of gifts. The gifts they don't even know they want until they get them, and then they're like, woohoo! They well, say, I love you. Being a weekend warrior and being able to accomplish these types of tasks uh, is, is uh, it, it's a benefit for us, right? It's a positive. And so no flowers, no candy, no chocolate. Yeah, that's old. No. Here's one. It's a DIY, folks. Here's that's, one. That's what's for, th for Valentine's Day, DIY. Do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, here's one that I have built in the past. And I want to build one for my wife. It's a cedar chest. Oh, yeah. I want to make one. Uh, I've got a great spot in our bedroom for it to keep all of our blankets or pillows or whatever is in there. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to build that out of aromatic cedar. I'll tell you what. That is a scent that will be with me uh, long into my retired years. As a child, my mom and dad had cedar chests. Several I used of them. To lock you in there? Actually, no, but they kept the blankets in there. And so when we would go for a blanket and we pull it out of the cedar chest and we would wrap up in it, that is a very uh, familiar scent, right? I mean, I work with cedar all the time. You work with cedar all the time, but this is different. Wrapping up with a blanket that smells like it's been in a cedar chest is, uh, is very comfortable very emotional connection for me so um i totally get where you're coming from that's yeah, uh, and honestly, it's very unique and awesome have you ever built a chest tony i have built a box i have not built a chest i have built a cedar chest before as a gift for somebody mm -hmm. and uh it is not terribly difficult uh i mean you can you can buy you can either build it out of cedar or you could build it out of plywood even and align it yeah, they make sure. uh, they make closet liners, what they call it, but mm -hmm. it's aromatic cedar. It's very thin, uh, and you can line the inside of any chest that you make, any box, and uh, you know, kind of trim it out, looking nice with handles and you know the lid. Uh, what I would like to do is is uh, they make lid uh, hardware. Sure, that's when you lift it up, 
it doesn't slam back down. Mm -hmm. So I recommend that. That's a good idea. I mean, that's the one thing I feel like the, it's the anomaly that keeps it from lasting and working great for a long time is the lids tends to be a little heavy. It gets opened and closed. Of course you have kids probably and they open and close. It's got to be pretty strong in order to stand the test of time. Like a, cedar chest the should. last one that i built had a uh, pneumatic uh pneumatic little thing on it so sure as it, as oh it right dropped, Hi, like a thinking. hydraulic uh, yeah, sort yeah, of thank closer you. thank you that keeps it from that's a smart idea uh that's keep it from closing too quickly and and uh will extend the life of the chest so that's smart that's a great idea here's one that uh We've talked about, we had in our last house and, and we want to have in this house, but we haven't really chosen the right place for it, or maybe we haven't chosen the right style, but this is definitely a weekend type project. Um, and the, when you say uh, wainscot or um, raised paneling on the walls or chair rail, these types of things raise some images in your mind, but there's really a lot of ways to do it. But wainscot on the walls in the dining room or in the living room is is a look that i really like but there's a lot of ways to go about it so there's a lot of decisions that have to be made before you choose it do you want to go with raised panels or do you want to go with beaded paneling do you want the the chair rail to actually be at the height that generally chair rail would be at so that when you back your chair up it hits on the rail instead of on the wall or are you looking for something a little bit taller like a high rail, something around three quarter wall, the six, yeah, the six foot mark or something with, uh, with some nice raised panels on there. And then you paint that, a, a, an accent color. Um, that's not the same color as your wall. And I love the look. I love the finish look of wainscot if it's done right. Yeah. You know, it adds, you know, you could say that it adds like kind of a romantic feel to your home. Yeah. It adds a lot of character, a lot of character. Yeah. I mean, and it, as far as a Valentine's Day project, I feel, you know, it, it does. It definitely adds some character that would make it's your right wife down love the it. alley. I mean, here's the thing. We are in a we're in a time now where we're we've got sheetrock walls with orange peel texture. And honestly, to listen to Corey say accent wall colors are so 90s, right? So we're not doing that anymore. What does that leave you with? That leaves you with a bunch of sheetrock walls and orange peel texture. And honestly, it's nice to dress it up a little bit and make it, you know, just something different. And so I feel you know like this left is a, with, Tony? a perfect Valentine's Day project. You know project. what you're left with? What's that? Border. Wallpaper border. Yes, that's right. Wildlife scene. <laughs> you remember that? Wallpaper border. Chickens. <laughs> the whole bottom half is like hey, a look, wheat field. you got to have a chicken in the kitchen. At least that's what I've heard. <laughs> Or is it a rooster? I don't, I don't know. I don't have either. Maybe you have to have a rooster. It's good luck, man. Yeah, maybe I need to get one. I would say. maybe They used, you... to, they used to say paint your kitchen yellow because it would make you hungry. Oh, I don't yellow, know. Bob. The color yellow makes you feel hungry. Why do you want to be hungry? Nobody wants to be hungry. Right. They need to paint a color that makes you full so you don't eat. <laughs> like brown. So you don't you Paint your kitchen brown. <laughs> Another thing that you can add along those same lines of, of adding wainscot in like the dining room is a crown molding along the ceiling in a room. If you pick a room like your dining room, for example, and you decide you want to put some wainscot in there, another really great thing to add in there is some crown molding around the ceiling. It can really just add something special to a room. I'll tell you what, crown molding is one of those projects that I envy anybody that can do it. I mean, I am terrible at crown molding. I hate doing crown molding almost as much as I hate doing drywall. Is it the compound miters? You know, I don't know. No, I think it's the fact, I mean, I can cut, I have a compound miter saw. I can cut all those things. I can look in the book and I can come up with the correct angles and cut it. But when it comes to putting it on the wall, it seems like nothing is ever square. <laughs> well, the walls are generally That's not I'm square. Saying. So you put it up there and you're <laughs> constantly fighting with it. And yeah. I don't know, just not good at it. Yeah, well, it takes patience, I think, for a project like that. I and mean, then get it to come out perfect because, of course, you can't have those gaps, right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, otherwise, uh, it looks like you, Your hired, teeth. You, you hired the kid down the street to do it for All you. All gappy and filled <laughs> with caulking. But I agree. And uh, that is that is a difficult project, although if it's done right, it can be, it can really add something special to the house, as can uh, a kind of unique, um, antique sort of piece of something that you can as hang on can. a wall to give your house a little more character. As can 
a an antique window. Yes. So we were during the break. We were talking with a buddy here, and uh, he threw out this great idea because he does. Uh, he likes thrifting. It's building a picture frame out of an old antique window sash. Oh yeah. Which you can get just about at any antique store. Antique store, or you had a better idea. Yeah, I was thinking that a really great place to find something like that, whether it's antique or not, you could probably find at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. You can find a lot of things at a Restore, if especially if you're in an area where there is some rural areas like some ranches or farms or things that are around. They have old barns, and a lot of times they'll bring uh, parts and pieces from those things in and donate them, and then they become available right there in your little area. So... Uh, Habitat for Humanity Restore is a great place to get things on the cheap, and you'll be surprised what you find there. Um, antique stores sometimes get to be a little bit expensive, but uh, Habitat for Humanity Restore is definitely not. Yeah, I actually have in the studio here a piece of art that uh, a PAR employee did for me, uh, Steve Willis. I don't know if he's listening, probably not, but <laughs> he's a glass artist, and he put together uh, a couple of ravens for me on a piece of glass but that piece of glass is in an old antique window it right. even has it's an old sash from a window but it even has the hinges uh it used to be like a hinged window sash it looks right. really cool yeah i agree so there's so a, much you can do with stuff like that a pretty good idea yeah um here's an idea it's a little off uh from that but this is a great idea um and i'll tell you why your uh your spouse or or your wife or husband or significant other, right? What better way to say happy Valentine's Day, I love you, than to build a workspace that the two of you would share doing crafts or scrapbooking or other types of creative things uh, that obviously some creative type people like to do. Now, I understand there are different types of people, right? I'm a super creative kind of person. I love to draw. I love to create things um, that are, you know, would otherwise be, I don't know, not a very manly thing to do. All right. I'm willing to admit it, right? Corey, not really an arts and crafts kind of guy. He Says likes who? to, he likes to build me. You don't think I'm arts and crafts? I am an authority on the subject because I'm your best friend. So if anybody knows, I know. Now, you do like to build things out of wood. And you build some amazing things. Drawers, dovetailed drawers and, and furniture, chests, for example. A chest of drawers. These are things that are up your alley. But maybe a drawing of a couple of things maybe might not be uh, one of the things you do. Sure. But I'll tell you what. To build a space, a creative work table, or something in a in a den or an office, to build something like that, that you could work together with your partner, uh, is really something that says I love you. And I'll tell you what, um, we've got we've got one in our house, and uh, it gets used a lot. I absolutely love that. That is actually on my list of things I'm going to do for my wife. Uh, you know, I might actually get it done. Before next week. Yeah. And give it to her as a present. Yeah. I want to create a craft a, table. Yeah, a craft table for wrapping presents, for, you know, doing all the things that she likes to do where she needs a big space to do those things. Yeah. I mean, honestly, wrapping presents on the carpet or the floor stinks. Yeah. Man, that is the worst. Yeah, no good. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna build like a, a rack with wrapping paper. Sure. You know, the, where you put the, like a rack that holds... Uh, like dowel rods, and on each dowel rod, I'm going to put a uh, the wrapping paper, each one. And then a really cool thing to do is to take, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Hacksaw blade. Oh, yeah? So you take a hacksaw blade, and you put it down there. So that way, when you pull, it's like you could take whatever wrapping paper you want off, put it in the thing, and then you pull it out, and then zoop, pull it off. Oh, smart, yeah. It cuts it for you. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, this table that you're building, you know, you need to be able to think outside the box a little bit. You're not just building the table for the things that you know she has today or the things she's going to do today. But you also want to build it for things that maybe could be taking place going forward. I mean, my wife has a T-shirt press. She's got a 
cricket air. She's got, um, oh man, all kinds of stuff that takes up space on the table. Sewing machine is another example. She have a 3D printer? She doesn't, but that may be another one of the things. I want one. Yeah, it would You know be what awesome. she also, you know what you should probably get her? Hmm. This is a good idea because she loves doing those crafty things. Yeah. Is you should get her a um, a laser, you know the the 3D laser, not the laser 3D laser, but the you know what I'm saying, a plasma the, cutter. No, a CNC laser. Oh, a CNC laser. Is you can you can wood burn things. You can oh, yeah. put whatever you want in That's there. That's probably and have it. really really expensive. No, they're not that bad. Really? I bet you can get one for under a grand. Does it? <laughs> well. Well, it does seem like something that would be a lot of fun to have. But, I think your uh, wife is worth it. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about I that. Think she would agree. <clears throat> uh, here's another thing that was on my list of things that I knew my wife wanted. And it is, you may not have heard of this. I don't know. You're not really as refined, maybe, as I am. A charcuterie tray. Charcuterie? A charcuterie tray. Have you heard of this? I uh, have. Really? But I'm not sure you're pronouncing it correctly. Oh, well, maybe I'm not. Do you, do you know the correct way to pronounce uh, charcuterie tray? Let's ask Google. Okay. Charcuterie. Oh. Wait, did you hear that? Let's try it again. Charcuterie. <laughs> I, I yeah. can't even pronounce that. I think you have to have a French accent in order to say that. Char charcuterie. Charcuterie. Yeah. Charcuterie. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't do it. I'll tell you what. It's a cheese plate. This is what it is. <laughs> and cheese plate's easier to say. A lot of times it's made uh, like like a, a butcher block, sort of. Um, but it's round, generally made out of wood. And um, and it's big because you want to put lots of different kinds of skeezy cheeses on there. Oh, I love stinky cheese. Yeah. I love Not much better than stinky skeezy, cheese. Skeezy, stinky cheese and cheese, some, wine. some meat and some oh. crackers and maybe a little bit of some bread some or something. Almonds. These are always fun. Uh, a charcuterie. Charcuterie. Tray uh, is something that is really good thing for... Um, for a spouse that does not already have one. Well, and if you're thinking uh, if you're already that crafty to be able to make a cheese board, right? Uh, you might as well make a uh, a cutting board. Yeah, to go right along with it. Yeah, to make a really cool end grain cutting board isn't that difficult. Uh, I've seen them where you could cut. You just take tons of little pieces, and you need a lot of clamps. Uh, but then you glue yeah. them up, you put them together, <laughs> and you. You know, run it through a planer if you've got one. Now you wouldn't want to do that. It'd probably blow up. But you could probably sand them flat. That's what I would do. Why, why do you think it would blow up if you ran it through the planer? Depend on how much variation was in there, probably. Well, yeah. No, you wouldn't want to do that. The thing about a, a planer is a spinning planer blade. Mm -hmm. I mean, those things spin at, you know, pretty high RPMs. And yep. if you're putting it in there, uh, end grain doesn't want to, it, it wouldn't. It would fight, down. Yeah, fight, it would maybe. fight, fight those blades. And then if you got all that end grain sticking up, it w I wouldn't do it. Especially it's if like it's different say, different species of wood, which yeah, exactly. might be grinding at a different. It's like they say when you're wood turning, you have to use very strong glue to glue things together. Otherwise, if you throw it on your lathe and you start turning it, and as soon as you put the tools to it, I think it'd blow up in your face. It's Yikes. actually you gotta be know what you're doing. Kind of dangerous, huh? So maybe you're thinking about a block planer or. Um, or a belt sander or something like that to get down to that super smooth surface for your butcher block. Yeah. If you're not putting it through the planer. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what. A butcher block would be a lot of fun to make. And it if would you be. make it extra big and you can cut a circle out of one side and uh, a square out of the other side, you get a charcuterie tray and a butcher block both at the same time. <laughs> what an absolute great idea. we got to take another quick break. More when we come back. You're listening to Tony and Corey, your weekend warriors. Don't go away. Our Lumber is committed to providing the best customer service. We provide personal service. We actively listen to you. We're appreciative and we care. We are Par Lumber. Hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. Today in the show, we're talking about Valentine's Day projects that you need to get done before next week. Yes. Uh, but real quick, I want to tell everybody... Go over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you search the Weekend Warriors Home Improvement Show or WW Home Show, uh, we're also on Instagram at WW Home Show, Facebook, Pinterest, all of those things. Or if it's easier, you can go to par.com. That's P A R R.com. Click on the Weekend Warriors link 
and uh, that'll take you to all of our links for our social media. Uh, if you want to email Tony or I, uh, we're at weekendwarriors at par.com. Yep. And uh, we'll take all your questions, all your comments. If Absolutely. you've got anything to say, if we look stupid yep. or said something dumb, yep. love to hear it. We do it. We do it happens, believe it or not. Uh, we make mistakes. Um, well, we're just, you know, that's the thing, right? We're just weekend warrior guys. Right. We work for Par Lumber. I sell lumber. You manage a store. Yeah. And we work on our houses on the weekends. So, right. yeah, we don't know everything, but we like to have people in here. We like to have professionals. And uh, we also are in a u- unique position at Par Lumber Company where, I, you know, like me, I talk to contractors every day. All day long, 10, every 15, day. 15, 20 contractors every day. So if I have a project going on, I am in that unique position where I could just ask them, hey, right? How do you do this? Yeah. Or how would you do that? Yeah. You know, what, what should I use here? So I learn a lot and I like to share that information with you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's sort of our claim to fame. We're around it. It's kind of like being uh, working in Hollywood around all of the people who are actors and actresses and they're super popular, right? Uh, and you're there. You're not an actor or an actress, but you're there and you're working and you're exposed to them. And so then one day you're putting makeup on Tom Hanks, right? And he knows your name because you do his makeup all the time. And then he says one day, you know, you should um, you should be in this next scene with me. Next thing you know, you're an actor. <laughs> right? Is that how it works? Is that how? I don't know if that's how it works. So we're, we're hanging around contractors all the time. And then next one day you know we're, a contractor. we're like, hey, he's like, hey, help me lift this wall. You lift a wall and boom, you're a contractor. Or a weekend warrior. <laughs> It's just kind of well, like what we what we do. We are homeowners, and that much is uh, is a major responsibility in and of itself. Maintaining your home, um, and maintaining its value and its integrity, and having something to pass on at some point going forward, something to grow old in. All of these things, right? These are things that you have to be. Yes, you have to be able to do all these things just to be a homeowner. You make a good point. So, um, here's something, Corey. Um, I, I would not know how to start on this project if I were building it myself, but I would want to know, have you ever built a rocking chair? Ooh, no. Okay. 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 I've assembled a rocking chair. From uh, Ikea? No. <laughs> From, um, I don't know, a restaurant that sells them. Um, I've assembled a rocking chair, but I have not built one. So. I, have, I have never built one. You know, honestly, building chairs in general are very, it's a very difficult thing. Yeah. It's not to, uh, it's to not do a easy. good job. Yeah. I mean, you, anybody could slap some stuff together and call it a chair, but <laughs> yeah. you know, to actually build a chair and have it sit flat and level and strong, it's not as easy as you would think. Right. And to build a rocking chair, now all of a sudden you're adding this whole new element yeah, of whole, difficulty. Uh, yeah. I'm not there yet. Maybe someday in my uh, gray years, I'll. Well, here's be the well here's enough. the video, folks. We feel like a couple of rocking chairs on your back patio would be very romantic. If you don't know how to build one, go buy one. Go buy two. I I, I would love to have a couple of rocking chairs on my back patio. I think that would be amazing. Me too. Um. So anyway, it's just an idea. Right uh, now, I've settled for Adirondack chairs. Yeah. And I well, didn't make them, but. I think that's something you could make. Yeah, you definitely. You actually have a couple of the most amazing Adirondack chairs I've ever seen. Yes, that's right. I had one made by a guy that I worked with at Par Lumber Company. Actually, he's retired now, but he's a he's an amazing talent, a very good friend of mine, and uh, we we saw this set of plans. He and I uh, online one day to build a, an Adirondack chair out of a wine barrel. And he was like, this looks so cool. I think I could do it. And I'm like, I'm in. Let's get after it. So he bought the plans and they sent them to him. And uh, he got in and he made the first one. And he found some things that he would change. And then he made a second one. And the second one was for me. And so I have that Adirondack chair actually on my back patio, which I love. And you've seen pictures of it. Yes, I want to build them. This I think is I can something build them. that you and I are going to do. We are going to find a way. We to, should post those on our Instagram. To copy that plan and, Honestly. and build that. I'm excited about that. Well, and, and it's easy. He said basically he got one full Adirondack chair from a wine barrel. That's right. And you, being in Newburgh, mm-hmm. wine country, Oregon wine country. That's right. Yep. You are right there smack in the middle of the Dundee Hills. Oh, we've got wine barrels coming out of our ears. Yeah, there's, you have so many. And the color, 
is yeah. gorgeous. It's absolutely the most beautiful purple, like purple heartwood. Like yeah. uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So that is a fantastic. Yeah idea i don't think you could get it done in a week maybe oh no i don't think so i mean you know obviously we have full-time jobs right so it's something that you only can tackle for a few hours in the afternoon and i know that uh, the guy that built mine was on it for months um but uh it's definitely something that would take some craftsmanship some patience and uh, some desire but we could definitely work through you and i could work through we built some amazing stuff actually I agree. uh here's another really great idea if you've got a smaller kitchen that is maybe lacking in the counter space area a really good idea Corey, is to build an island for the kitchen now that seems like you know a big deal but it doesn't have to be big Corey and i built an island for my kitchen because we had a kitchen that had room to have something, but not enough room to have a big island, you know? So we built something that was pretty small, really about 30 inches wide and about 65 or so inches long. Does that yeah. seem right? Yep. A standard countertop height at about 31, I think is what it was. And uh, we built it out of turned newel stair stair rail parts. Yeah, pre-made mm -hmm. stair newel posts. Right. And uh, upside and, down. Yeah, that's right. Up, up we, the cross rails and the supports underneath. And then, of course, we put um, a shelf across the bottom. And then I actually had an extra piece of quartz when we had our countertop refinished. And uh, we put a piece of quartz up on top of that. And it absolutely is an essential part of my kitchen today. Yeah, it turned out fantastic. And that's actually a really good. Fairly simple project that we should probably do as a DIY how-to video someday if we need to build another one for somebody. Oh, I agree. Uh, we, it won't be too long before we'll be doing a um, a mobile workbench for your small wood shop or workshop. Oh, yeah. Something that you can put up and take down. That is, folks, um, that is a how-to video in the making, actually. Corey and I will be working on that before too long. That's right. Super exciting stuff. What else have you got? We're running out of time, buddy. What else have you got? What else can we build? We got a little spice rack for the kitchen. Yeah, spice rack would be great. You know, I guess uh, maybe assuming a little too much there, building a spice rack. But here's some great projects for outside. If your significant other, your spouse, or your wife, your husband is a gardener, build a workbench outside for potting plants. Oh, yeah. Like a, a gardening workbench. Uh, they're super easy to build. You build them out of, you know, you get cedar. Here's a tip. Par Lumber sells rough sawn utility grade two by 10 cedar just about every year. Mm -hmm. And it's very inexpensive. You can build some really cool stuff out of that. Yeah. Another thing you can build out of that, raised garden beds. Mm -hmm. If you have raised garden beds or if you have, you know, somebody that wants raised garden beds, you can put that together in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. We actually built uh, at my house for my daughter, uh, we built her an elevated raised garden bed oh. that was on legs, right? So it stood up at the standing level and we built the box just the same way we would if it was on the ground, except we put a bottom in it. And of course, we, uh, we drilled holes in the bottom so that uh, the water could get out, right? And, uh, and it's up at normal height. And she put some small plants in there, you know, like uh, some peppers or... Little you know, herbs and yeah, things. Yeah, some little herbs and things in there, which... And she absolutely loved that. That was a really great, uh, really great project we did. That's a pretty cool idea for somebody that doesn't um, want to bend over or yeah. do that, you know, that, that gardening work. If they are maybe have some sort of disability. I mean, to have them raised up like that, you could even have somebody in a wheelchair yeah. that could potentially do some gardening. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a smaller little... Uh, garden bed, but it works really good and you can have it up off the ground. Yeah, so I think that's cool. a really cool project. Here's another quick one. Vertical planting planters. You can actually buy or even use a pallet. Use an old pallet, stand it up, build some cedar boxes on there, and you've got yourself a vertical planter. That's a great idea. Well, that's all the time we got, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been another episode of Your Weekend Warriors right here on the Weekend Warriors Radio Network. Have a great week.